Hello, there we go. How's everybody doing today? Welcome to another game development stream. I am Solarloon. And I am uh, an independent game developer and musician and stuff like that. How's everybody doing today? Um, oh my goodness. I got the <laughs> Not quite the hiccup, so it just kind of water moving down my throat, uh, making me kind of stop talking. But anyway, hello, how's everyone doing today? Uh, I'm Solar Luna. I'm an independent game developer, musician, all that kind of stuff. And today I'm going to be working on a game um, known as Door Jam. It is basically a 2D action uh, puzzle game, and I've been working on it uh, in Golang, manually, basically making it by by hand over the past uh, couple weeks. Um, and yeah, it's going pretty well. Uh, so firstly, I guess, how's everyone doing today? Boondi, Jakob Karkoska in the chat saying hello, hello. And so this is what the game looks like. Uh, I fixed up, I fixed up the uh, pathfinding. So pathfinding works a little bit better now. Um, well, it looks, I guess it works much the same, but the difference is before pathfinding was dependent on uh, a grid. So like, you know, every cell, like it was basically like every cell had to have a node and that's how it worked. Now I kind of generalized it a little bit, which will make it run slower when it comes to calculating the path. But the upside is that you can have nodes wherever you want. They don't have to be on a grid, which is important. Um, well, that's not important specifically for my purposes, but having nodes be able to be connected, um, or ha basically being able to control which nodes are connected is, is important. And so that's what I'm going to be doing is basically implementing it so that you can, for example, uh, go through a doorway like this and it should follow you through the doorway rather than going all the way around. Um, and then we can basically kind of filter that a little bit, make it so that, you know, not every enemy will go through the door. Some enemies will not go through doors, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so yeah, it's looking pretty good, feeling pretty good. Uh, I'm also going, going to see about uh, implementing some background music into the game. I feel like that would be a, a good thing to try because I'm not sure exactly how SDL handles uh, music and sound. So I think it would be a good a good thing to kind of start implementing some of that, those things just so I can get a, a little bit of experience and and insight into how it works. All right, so that's the plan for today. So first things first, uh, let's get some music. That's always the first thing that we need to do is get some music going. Uh, we will go with... Hmm. I don't know why that opens in VLC. I guess I know why it opens in VLC, but anyway, I, I do know uh, new. I do know why it opens in VLC, but I guess that's not important. All right, we'll go with this song, I suppose. Uh, let me just move some things around so I can kind of see what I'm doing. Okay, something like that. All right. Okay, so yeah, uh, this is gener working pretty well. I kind of feel like. Because currently, I I made it so that pre well previously it was made so that basically each cell, like the pathfinding system was built on cells. So it would be like okay, here's a cell, and then one over is this cell, one down is this cell, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, now I generalized it so that each pathfinding grid is just composed of nodes, which are connected kind of arbitrarily, um, or they can be placed arbitrarily and connected via um, distance. That works okay, but I kind of feel like that's going to be slow because it has to basically the for path for the process of connecting the nodes. It has to traverse the entire list of nodes. When really, if we positioned it in a two D array of grids or a two D grid of yeah, if we positioned it in a two D grid, it would be better. So I'm kind of feeling like maybe I should go back and rewrite that. Because really all I need to do, the, the nodes themselves don't have to be arbitrary. They can still exist in a 2D grid because most 2D games work with grids. Uh, 
or at least, you know, you can generalize it to the point where you're working with the grid and tiles. If you're working with something else, then maybe something else will work better, but I think that's a good generalization for now. And so what we're gonna do, we're gonna go back and rewrite that a little bit. I think we should be good to rewrite it. The fundamental like system and the, the way this works is still the same. Yeah. Yeah, the fundamental way this works will still work basically the same. It's just how this actually... Like, the way it works will work the same, but the way it looks and the internals are going to be better. Going to be different and be a little bit better, I think. Let's try this. Let's try this. You know what? Let's, let's do this first. Let me save this and com uh, commit it. So now we're going to do a 2D array of nodes. Uh, we don't need this anymore. This is no longer necessary. Oh, this is, okay, I was trying to remember like why, wait, hold on, let me think. Because the current incarnation before I rewrite this is basically, uh, it allows, ah, okay, let me go back, hold on. Yeah, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, so, Okay, wait, we got Lucretius, we got Rashad Z in chat. Hello, welcome. How are you guys feeling today? So the current incarnation basically allows for nodes to be placed arbitrarily, so you could, for example, have... All right, that's a good reason to keep it. So the current way that this works, like let, let's say you wanted to kind of make this sparse and make it so that nodes don't exist every 16 by 16 squ you know, squares like this, but rather just on points of interest. So you might place one on the door, you might place one on the edges of platforms, you might place one on uh, maybe the top and bottom of ladders, you know, that kind of stuff. This system would allow you to do that. Whereas if I were to make it so that you are working with a grid, it would force you to basically space it out. So maybe I'll leave it the way it is, because this way you can have more control over where the nodes are. They don't all have to be spaced every 16 by 16. That's fine. I think this is fine then. Uh, Rashad Z says, yo, this is the new pathfinding system? Yeah, yeah, this is the new pathfinding system. The Coolin says, hello, hello. So what we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna test this out real quick. We're gonna connect this door to this door uh, when it comes to the pathfinding. So how we're gonna do that is a little bit weird, but I think uh, should, it shouldn't be too difficult. The idea is that when we generate the pathfinding grid, uh, Lucretius says working with grid makes it a little easier to allow enemies to jump down. That's true. Um, yeah, I suppose that's true. Okay, so my current idea here is to connect the door, the cell that's over the door with the other cell that's over the door. Um, 
I guess actually we could probably make one pathfinding grid, like a global pathfinding grid, and then just enemies use that grid to, to generate the paths, right? That makes sense, because that way the, the door could kind of own the cell that it's in, rather than each enemy. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so we're gonna... Let's actually zoom this out a little bit so I can... Eh, that's, I guess it's fine the way it is. I just need to move this around a little bit. Uh, Lucretia says, I made a 2D plat plat platformer, a sort pathfinding algorithm that does allow for jumping and wall jumping. It's expensive because you have to add an extra dimension to the grid, the jump dimension. I'm not sure if I understand exactly what you mean, but it's an, in an interesting problem. <laughs> it's an interesting problem, definitely, um, and I'd like to hear more. I think that what I'm going to... Oh, that's right. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to move the Pathfinding Grid out of the enemy uh, into just the level, because that many enemies could Pathfind, right? So we're going to make it here, we're going to go back to enemy... Uh, levels, pathfinding grid is that. Go back to enemy. Yeah, and then we'll go ahead and move this. And this. Over to level when we load the level. Okay. She says, uh, one day he'll make a video on it. It's interesting. Oh, yes, please. I, I'm interested. Kai Jihan says, hi, friends. Hello. Okay, so this should work. Uh, let's go back over here. So now it's just going to be the levels pathfinding grid. Pathfinding uh, debugging over into level. We'll move it into the draw function. Debug, here we go. Uh, the actual path we're not gonna draw. Well, actually that's gonna, that would be in the enemy, okay. Something like that. Okay, so it still works the same. All right, cool. So what we want to do now is actually connect these. So that when we go through a door, it will basically know that it can take the door. To do that, we have to go to level. We have to basically, when we load, and connect the nodes. We want to connect to basically the door nodes specifically. To do that, we have to loop through them. Yeah, this seems like a good approach. We'll do this here. Okay. So we basically say, let's go ahead and... So the door is already created and then we're basically looping through the LDTK information to see where the other door is. Uh, actually, let's pull up LDTK. So basically, when we place a door, uh, this is you know the starting door, and it, each door basically has a property that is uh, other door, and that's just going to a point. And so you can move the point around, and you know it's just gonna basically sit over the other door that you created. That's the way that this works. And so this turns into this, where we basically get the property, the other door property, 
we get it as a map. So we have an X and Y variable, which are float64 values, and then we link to those positions. So that's all well and good. Now what we want to do is basically get the corresponding cell, uh, which we should be able to do with... Actually, we probably want to do this here in the link. Whoops. In the link to function. We say level door dot level dot path binding grid dot node at we want to know that is at the doors position with the margin of 16 I guess uh, let's see if this actually does work Yo, there it is. Okay, so there's the node. And so we just basically want to connect this node to the other node, which is the other door. Okay, that's not correct, but that's, that's actually like pretty close. That's actually pretty close, that's, that's crazy. He's not quite taking the door, but he is actually actively trying to use the door in pathfinding. That's sick. That's really that's really good. It's not correct. <laughs> Be patient. It's not correct. <laughs> uh, let's see. So yeah, he knows he's gonna take the door. So why does he overshoot it first? He overshoots the door. So it adds connection. Oh, maybe it needs to be the center? It's over, that's why. Okay, we, just, we need the center, okay. I guess this could be the right store Y. And then the other door. That might work better. Let's see. That does work better. Okay. So he's he's now whoops. He's now actively taking the right like he's in the right cell. He just needs to actually use the door. Alright. That's that's sick. So now what we need to do is actually make the enemy use the door, which is gonna be a little tough. Okay, so when we, uh, I, what the, the way I made this is basically nodes can have tags. So I'm going to tag the node, because uh, we added connection, right? Yeah, node add. Okay, so let's let's actually do this. We're going to get the other, we want this door node, as well as the other door node. So this would be door node would be other door node. Okay. So now we want to basically tag both of these um, as door. Now, when we go ahead and actually go to the enemy and we're pathfinding, we say like, okay, you know, we're going to do this, go through this, right? We're going to go ahead and move but once we see like oh i'm on uh a door actually let's just cut that out um when we see we're on a door node we'll just like rather than advancing through the path we're going to teleport so we say basically if next dot as tags door then we're just going to, just for now, we're just gonna basically immediately teleport the object, the enemy, to, uh, yeah, we're just gonna teleport him right now. 
Let's see if that works. Okay, that's that's pretty close. That's that's not bad actually. Yeah, that's that's actively really really close. Oh, but you noticed a little a little bug there. Hold on. When he moves past the door, yeah, see he like snaps. That's because we're checking. We want to check at the next. Um. You know what? Let's rename this. We'll sit and name this current. What? No, I just want to rename this. Right. There we go. Uh, so we have current. That's the current node that we're looking at, and then we have the next, which is only that path that next. And so we basically say if both the current and the next nodes are both doors and the distance to the other why is it, let me hold on let me go over over let me go over and fix this hold up okay uh distance to yeah can we get a distance to that fix a node instead Note at distance to, okay so we're just gonna rename this distance to point So we want to basically just return node.distance to point, other node.x, other node.y, we'll do that. There we go. And then we can go back over here and we say current.distance2, uh, next is greater than, we'll say 16. And then basically we want to actually, we're going to take the door. We're traveling through it. Okay. So that should basically uh, kind of fix a couple of those issues. So he should snap, there he goes. Um, but when we are simply standing past the door, he shouldn't actually like try to take it. He should just walk, walk by it like normal. There we go, we're good. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is, uh, and it's not perfect, it's a little janky, but that's okay. The next thing we need to do is basically actually have him use the door. Now the current system that I had in place, I completely overlooked actually use actively using the door. I'm sorry, co uh, Code with Ruby said, what engine do you use? Uh, I'm using Golang, uh, my own custom engine. It's not really an engine, it's just uh, I'm coding it myself with Golang and Go SDL2. It's going pretty well. Um, generally would recommend this. So, yeah, I completely overlooked actually, like, having other characters use a door. Uh, so let me, let me look over how this works again with the player. Is it like a timing thing? How did I do this? So you enter, it checks if there's a door there. Uh, check objects by tags, door, okay, if linked, is open. So it opens the door, you play enter, you hit the tag where you teleport, it teleports to the other position. And that's it. Okay. I want to kind of simplify this, and I'm not sure how I can. Now, an idea that I have is to basically make it so that you can just, for example, say door.enter player. And so what this will do is start the door animation uh, start the player entering animation at some point make the player invisible play the door closing animation uh, teleport the player play the other door opening animation make the player visible play the player uh, exiting animation make the door close now the advantage of this is if I make this function I could pass any object as long as it has the correct 
as long as it fulfills the interface, which for an enemy or the player could just be something that returns an ace sprite, basically. Uh, just return a position and return an ace, ace sprite. So anything can go in there. Because we need to be able to play the animation and we need to be able to move the object. Or maybe another way to do this would be to make a door enterer interface. Let me let me kind of do I have types in here? Do I have a types? I do. So I'm thinking something like type what did, on touch. Where do I? Oh, we're touching a dollar. Okay. So I'm thinking like a like can enter doors is an interface and we just basically give a function that allows us to uh, I mean I could, we could do something like this uh, what am I looking for We could do something like this, right? So basically anything that has a can enter doors function. And maybe like bool. I'm thinking that basically the door can call can enter doors to force it to force the object to be at a specific location. Um maybe whether it's visible or not. And also the animation. Play the animation, right? for like entering a door or exiting. But that's very specific. But at the, on the flip side, it's very obvious, right? Like if it doesn't have this function, then it can't enter doors. If it does have this function, it can enter doors. That's easy. The alternative would be to make something that's more kind of uh, nebulous, where it's like something like this. Uh, you have the position, right? You got that position. That's why, float 64, got yeah, set visible. Uh, you got set animation. And so like now you have to implement three different functions just to make one thing where it can enter a door. But the flip side is that if we have another interface that basically does this kind of thing where it sets the position, it sets visibility, it sets animation, that it would fulfill that as well. I don't know. Um, Ruby says, will DoorJam be open source? I am interested to learn any of this. Dabbing? Is that the dabbing emoji? There's a dabbing emoji? Okay. Um, yeah, I well, it's not gonna be open source. The source will be available online for you to peruse and like download and build. But the, this game is still going to be a paid game. It's still going to be a, 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 a product. Um, but yeah, the source will be available so you can look at the source and, and see how I'm making it. Uh, or watch the stre these streams. I've been streaming basically all of it on online. Is there a dabbing emoji? Is that what this is? Elbow call. <laughs> I, okay. That's just a dabbing emoji. It's, that's just the dabbing emoji, dude. There's no different, you can't tell me that's, 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 that's just dabbing, dude. That's just 13 year old dabbing. That's, there's no elbow cough. Why is his other arm out? Like his other arm is like, like if it was just an elbow cough, he should be more hunched over. He should be more hunched over. Instead, his arm is out. Like he's, <laughs> that's not, this is not a dabbing emoji. For anyone who's like, what are you talking about? Uh, let me see if I can... Hold on. I don't know if... Wait, I can pop this out. There we go. I think this will work. 
Hopefully it doesn't have anything that is like super critical to my existence. We'll do it like this, okay. But yeah, this emoji is elbow cough apparently. This is just da the dabbing. This is just a dabbing emoji. There's there's no way this is elbow cough. Why is the other arm out? That's just that's just uh, whatever. That's just what I think. I don't know. Anyway, um, <laughs> I was like, why are you putting the dabbing emoji in my? Okay, I maybe it is the dab. I don't know. Anyway. Uh, so both of these are, are, are an approach. I guess the, the downside of this is that this this is very specific, right? So if we want, if we have another thing where we need to set the visibility, set the position, or set the animation of a character, for example, maybe if they die or uh, yeah, whatever, whatever, if they get exploded, you know, some something, some other interaction, then we'll have to make a whole different function that basically does these things. It sets these variables internally. Uh, this is better. It's not easier, but it's better for the long term. So this is what we're gonna go with. Um, so this is just gonna be like... I don't even know what to call this. Maybe just like, drawable? Visible? But we're using a an object to set these variables, not get these variables. Maybe a string. This would actually just, we don't need to be specific. Something like that. Let's go with this and then see how this goes. So yeah, I'm thinking that the door could just take basically... Well, I like int, in, can enter door. that we can call door.enter and then door.enter will play the animation, it will set the visibility, it will set the position, and it will all be synced up according to the door. That way we don't have to like implement a whole bunch of functions on the player and get timings correct and all that stuff. This is fine. I think this is probably the better approach. Okay. I've thought it through, I've talked it through, and I think this is probably what we're gonna do. So let's go ahead and pull up door. Uh, we're gonna make a function. So we're setting the object that can enter a door to this position. We are going to let's find this. So we're going to play this door animation. We're going to start the position, uh, start the frame at zero. Uh, okay, so we can basically do this a little easier, I think, using the door object or using the door animation. So we have the door here, right? This is the animation. So once we hit this tag, this will be the teleport tag. Um, all right, something like that. So let, let's start with this concept first. Then we don't need a, well, I guess we can still have the state machine, that's fine. Door open, we won't have this anymore. Enter, okay. All right, enter. All right, so we have that. We don't need the teleport here. The player will not teleport, the door teleports. That makes more sense now that I think about it because the door is linked. Yeah, that makes a lot more sense. So the player doesn't actually really do anything. So we have enter, fail, enter. Yeah, the door is linked. Okay, I'll just comment that out. So we have door uh, player, so the player doesn't work because it's missing these animations. So we will, or I'm sorry, these functions. So we'll implement those real quick.
Uh, set animation. Set position, set animation, actually we want that. Set animation and what was the last one? Set visibility. Uh, there we go. Visible equals. And the ideal is basically no, no. the ideal is that if we do this correctly, then we just basically uh... hold on. Actually, this probably should be here. The ideal is that if we do this correctly, then essentially it is super simple and easy. Dot enter. Like if we do this right, then basically it should be extendable and also simpler in terms of code because it was kind of complicated. All right. So we can't go into our into failed doors anymore. We'll have to fix that. Yeah, that's overall not too bad. Okay. It crashed, but we'll fix that later. Let's actually take out uh, the enemy. Let's take him out, because I don't want to do anything about that just yet. I want to focus on getting this to be extended, or extendable. All right. So in the door, okay. In the door we say enter, we're saying the position. I thought we would say set center. Okay. Hold on, let me see something real quick. Real quick. I just want to see something really quick. Here. Does this get it? Missing function set. Let me see. Types. Yo, that works. Oh, that's sick. Okay. I didn't even know that uh like when you when you embed a struct into another struct, the variables and functions get uh assigned or you know, they're they're usable on the on the struct you're you're embedding into, which is, you know, to be expected, but also interfaces are fulfilled that way. I didn't even know. Okay. I might change that later. Okay. Anyway, let's keep going. So we have set center, we have set uh, animation, we have set visible. Okay. So when we enter, we want to set the center to be the door's object's center. Oops. Okay, slightly better. Uh, we don't want... We want it to be, like, at the bottom, though. Hmm. 
Okay. What we're going to do, we're just going to kind of cheese it a little bit. it might be four let's see yeah no yeah i'm just gonna kind of hard code this a little bit a smidge yeah better okay So, state machine that activate door. Enter, okay, enter. All right, let's see. Okay, this is where, okay. So you can get in there more aggressively from the right side. Okay. Just like you can from the left. Okay. Alright, so now that we're basically having it so that, you know, she's locked in there, we should be good <clears throat> for the door to basically do what it's gonna do. So when we say enter, we say basically door.asprite.play. We're gonna play the door opening animation, which is just called open, right? Yeah. Okay, we play the open animation, and then uh, we set the door state machine. I guess we could actually do this here. So we'll play the door open state. We set the interruptible's position. We set their animation. Uh, so then, yeah, we're starting that. Okay, and then when we're done, we. Reactivate the normal state? Okay. I think it did it. Yeah, I think it's, it's actually doing it. It's just she's in the way, so I can't see. But she's definitely not playing the animation. Let's see why. So we go to enemy, or rather player. We're activating the interstate here so we don't actually change let's see I just want to see is the Andrew Gutierrez yo what's up how's it going Hmm, so it should be playing the animation. Let's see. Unless I choose the wrong animation name. It's... No, enter. Yeah, okay. So what's going on here? So we're playing the animation. interesting because it should be playing an animation but for whatever reason it's not a mid state let's see 
Okay, so this is definitely triggering, so I'm not sure why... Ah, okay. So it's a matter of sequence. So basically what's going on is we're activating the interstate. No. Yeah, okay, that is what ha what's happening. Okay. Yeah, we're activating the interstate, which basically calls door to enter, but we're not done with this. It, it does it basically, you know, start our, our door entering process, but then we come back over here and we play the animation. That's what's stopping it, okay. So, we want to do this last. That's one way to fix it. Another way to fix it would be to basically like return out of this quicker. Uh, yeah, I guess we could just return out of it. Okay, better. Now, what, what are we doing here? So we're checking to see if you're climbing a ladder. We don't care about that. We, we're playing animations and stuff. We don't care about that. Falling, we don't care about that. Okay, so we should be good to, to keep this. All right, so what we do is we basically say, okay, you're gonna play this animation. All right, uh, entering really could just be one direction, right? So we play it. And then when it's over, we set them to be invisible. We just wanted to play it once, really. Okay. So we say basically, uh, door enter. Okay, so this is where this comes in. Activate open. Oops. Okay. I think this is correct. So we say door dot entering is interval. And then we activate this state. So then when we go to here, we do this. We play the open animation, starting from zero. Play Fine, it's not, <laughs> not possible for some reason, fine. Uh, okay, now, We only want to play it once, though. Let me see if I can fix that specifically. Do I have to fix that animation specifically? Direction and start. Nah, there's no way to play it once. Okay, that would be too too powerful. I didn't think that far ahead. Years ago. Okay. So I think we're gonna revamp this right now. Okay, so we're playing. So we'll have to do it like this. Door. Uh, so we're opening 
right, and we'll say basically if or info. I can't do it that way because we don't have a way to get the animation. You know what? <clears throat> Let's do it like this. Uh, we will play the animation, right? So we have the teleport. Let's just keep going. So let me re-export this. That's fine. So we basically say if door dot sprite dot tag teleport door dot set center door dot linked doors zero. We're just going to do this. There we go. Link X, link Y, link Y plus equal four. X, Y, door dot entering dot set animation. I guess we could just have like enter and exit, something like that. Uh, and then we say uh, linked, actually. Door, what's this? Door dot ace right play open. Set frame zero. Okay, so something like this. If it's finished. I guess we would do something like this open send and open receive. So the receiving door opens and then closes like this. Receive is just, it opens, and then we say if it's closed, or if it's fun, finished, then we close it, set it back to normal, okay. So then we just say link to door dot state machine dot activate open receive. Uh, current thing, okay, we don't do that. All right, this should get us kind of there. I believe. State machine lacks update function. What did I? Open, oh, open send, that's why. Open send, okay. Open send. Uh, let's see. Almost, almost. Let's see. Open send. Let's do a couple things, actually. Let's move the player closer to this door so we don't have to move so far all the time. And then also, let's see. Open send. Set center. Set animation. Play. If. Teleport. Are we not? Let's see. Are we not hitting that tag? Looks like we should be. Oh, I'm not sure why it worked that time, but okay. All right, let, that's good, that's good. All right, that works, that works. So we just need to also say link door.entering is equal to door.entering. Then the open receive, we basically say, okay, play, open. Oh, we need to set their state machine, don't we? 
there's no way to know whether it's finished. We need to know, we need to let the object entering know when it's done. I feel like there's an easier way to do this, but I'm not sure what it might be. What if we... So you got interable, can enter door, you're setting that. And then we have enter send. We set the position, we set the animation, we play the open animation. Okay, animation set frame. Like this is almost there. That's the thing that's that's crazy. Like it's almost like exactly where we need it to be. The only thing currently is that there's no way to break out of this. How do we let the player know that they're finished being teleported? Maybe I'm thinking about this wrongly. Maybe the only thing the player should do is basically when you go to enter a door it starts it plays the door entering animation then when it's done with that it says door teleport me the tele the door opens teleports the player closes the player plays the door exit animation You know what? I think that's what I'm going to do. This entire animation... I, that's what I had before though, I had the teleport tag. But I think that I'm, I'm on the right... Trump. Okay. Yeah. Let's let's make this even simpler. It's probably too complicated. I'm I'm kind of confusing myself by making it more complicated than it needs to be. The door doesn't have to set the visibility or the animation of things that can enter it. All it has to do is set the position. That's all it has to do is just move the object. We're not gonna handle animation. We're just gonna handle moving the object. So when you go to open a door, you do whatever you're gonna do for you. And then when you're ready, you say door teleport me. The door will teleport you. Uh, it will it will play the animation and then teleport you. Link door, okay. Door that entering. Open receive. Yeah. Alright, so I'm thinking something like this. This isn't that complicated, I don't think. It could probably do something like this, actually. No, that's fine. Okay. Alright, so we're playing on a mission. Apparently, open we'll receive. Alright, enemy to current distance to. Okay. So when we say this, we find enter. Yeah, okay, this is getting better. So we just say player dot... Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. I'm, I'm almost there, I'm almost there. Thank you for your patience, everybody. <laughs> uh, enter. Alright, so we're gonna say player dot a spread dot play. Enter. We can say if player dot a sprite dot hit tag teleport door dot enter player the 
this may okay so then we can say player dot expert play set up enter it'll be enter fail when we say we play otherwise we play enter okay if the teleport you teleport through to the other door and then we just say if you're done you go back to normal something like that Note that it's not working. Let's see. Is that because we're we're not calling door to enter? We're not positioning ourselves at the door. Okay. So the door. Hold on. There we go. Okay. Is that a sneeze? So linked is linked. We don't need that. Set position or set position. Okay, so we just need to position ourselves first. Oh, it's okay. So we're positioning ourselves. Okay, so that's right. Now, why isn't this happening? Did I not? I might need to re export it. I might have deleted it actually. It might be why. There we go. Okay. Very close. So, what we're going to do here to kind of make it a little easier for me to tell like it's actually working, we're going to actually animate this um, a little bit. I'm having trouble kind of like I'm, I'm getting a little bit lost in the sauce and I feel like if I kind of animate this it'll kind of help me see where I'm getting lost in the sauce Anyway, I'll do this later because this, this is in its own right a process. So you enter. Okay. This should be all gray. Okay, something like this should work. Uh, going up the stairs animation? No, nah, this is going through the door.
that works surprisingly well. The only thing is the door doesn't open. There we go. The door kind of opens a little late, um, but that's basically correct. That's basically correct. Uh, it could also happen a little faster, maybe instead of... Is it 200 frames from all these? No. What was it before? 50. Okay, let's make it 25. Okay. Uh, it's definitely getting there. Definitely getting there. So maybe the door opening animation should be basically here. We can get rid of the teleport animation. Uh, or teleport tag. We just say door open. And basically that's where what triggers when the door is opening and we're moving through. Okay. That works surprisingly well. Okay, okay, okay. Let's make a new, uh, new frame. Teleport will be there instead. This will be 200. This will be 200. And we can kind of position our tag a little bit better. There we go. Okay, now that should basically make it so that it's a little bit easier for the enemy, because basically when the enemy has to take the door here, uh, instead of doing this, we can basically implement this a little bit differently. So we're going to move this into its own state machine, I completely forgot. Uh, state machine is going to be new state machine, uh, and then we're going to define stuff. Oh, pardon me. Okay. Um, you know what? I'm going to make this a little bit easier and for myself. And say we don't actually have to activate the state machine by default. By default, whichever one is defined first will be the uh, starting state. Just to make it a little, a little bit, a little bit simpler. The coon says, uh, "This is coming along, along nicely, or lovely. Thank you." What does the start and finish process look like for each level? Um, I'm not sure if you mean like how do I define it, or do you mean where's the? There it is. I'm not sure if you mean like how do I define it or if you mean how do I uh pull up. I'm I'm mid mid thought here. Yeah, get rid of this. Each level design. How do I design the levels? Uh I'm not sure. I have I haven't really designed any levels other than this little test level that I'm working with. Uh which is you know, this one. Um the start, the process is going to be pretty much just, um, kind of start off with something simple and then grow in complexity. It's not going to be that, that hard. I'm probably going to break it up so that every few levels, there's going to be kind of like an action level where maybe there's not so many doors and it's really just about you kind of avoiding the enemies and collecting dollars and stuff. And then there's going to be a more puzzle levels as well, where you have to figure out like, oh, you know, how do I maybe make, you know, ground for myself, or how do I place the door where I need it to be? Um, actually, I was thinking that instead of making it so that you place doors, maybe you can only destroy doors, which respawn temporarily, uh, to respawn after a certain amount of time, and maybe doors always travel in a specific order because I didn't want you to be able to use doors and the enemy couldn't, right? 
Like, the enemies can travel through doors, but there's no way to know which door they'll, they'll be able to go to. Like, if, you make, if you're here and you make a door here, and you go in and, let's say, can press right to jump to this door, or maybe press up to jump to a door up here, how does the enemy know which door to go through? I mean, it could, it could pathfind it. I guess it could pathfind it. I guess that would work. I guess I gotta. We gotta get to that stage. I, I'm I'm still on the stage of actually implementing doors. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll see as as we go along. All right. So uh, we'll just do it like this. So we say define is this, and we say if uh, length machine dot states is equal to zero. I guess we'll just do it like this. First state equals machine dot states. This one's zero. We say if first state machine dot activate uh, state. I guess that's, that's probably a bad idea now that I think about it. This is super, like, magic. Where it just does stuff without you knowing about it. That's a bad idea. <laughs> Let's not do that. Go back to player. Let's fix it. Back to the way it was. Uh, it's always a... I think it's generally always a bad idea to have things be kind of magic. Or just things work without you really meaning for them to do so. Or really making it work that's probably a bad idea um all right so we're just gonna go like this we're gonna put that there put the enemy dot uh state machine dot activate normal uh and this should basically get us there right okay we're good cool now let's go over to uh LDTK, we're gonna place an enemy here. At least so we can kind of see everything's back to working. It is not back to working. Why is it not back to working? Oh, that's right. Uh, state machine dot up. Yo, he took the door. Okay, cool. Okay. So this does work. This does work. <laughs> crash. Why is it crash? Why did it crash? Uh, let's see. Current as time door next. Um, okay, yeah. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> Homies. Homie's going insane. All right. Why is he doing... Why is he climbing now when he didn't used to? Like, now he can take the door. But if I'm taking the door, he just climbs. That's an interesting problem. Let's see. Is it because... Next is not equal to nil. Okay, so we're advancing on the path. Next is not equal to nil. Okay.
Hulan says maybe a door bug. Yeah, I think it's uh, I think it's an issue with the door. Next, good to know. So what we want to do? How do we solve this. Like the core problem is because he takes the door, that's fine. But once he gets to this point, there is no next. It's just current. Current, that should be next actually. Okay, I think I see what's going on. So we say, uh, we want to advance basically only if, uh, Don Duval just wanted to stop by and say hello, keep up with the live streams. Oh, thank you. We'll do. Well, at least we'll try to. <laughs> we'll watch later. Oh, thank you very much for, for coming by. Always well appreciated. Indeed. Thank you. So. The problem is that basically we're advancing on the path. Um, like we're basically moving toward this node, even without. Like the only way that we, well, hold on. So at this point we want to advance. At this point we want to advance. If you're here and I'm here, you want to advance. And basically say... Ah, okay. You probably want to do something simple like this, and then we say... Hold on. All right. So we want to climb a ladder only if ladders are there. Yeah. Okay, so this is actually this is actually good. This is what we want. Um, we want to basically climb down like that only if there's a ladder there. So we say uh, this is the movement that we're moving on, and we say basically if enemy dot movement dot one is not equal to zero, then we basically say if check is equal to enemy dot object dot check. Zero, zero, ladder, check that valid, or I guess not check that valid, uh, then we're good. We say else if check is equal to enemy dot object dot check, zero, zero, door, check that valid, and we want to print out should be taking the door. And we say else enemy dot movement one. So basically, either we're climbing a ladder, or we're taking a door, or not. We're doing nothing. For now, we're just gonna handle that. But basically, it's saying I should be taking a door here. Should be taking a ladder. Should be taking a door. Okay. Uh, so here we say enemy dot movement one is equal to zero as well. Um, but we're taking a door here. So now we, this is where we do, uh, what we were going to do previously. Okay. So, uh, we're going to define a state, a new state. Okay. 
go. Uh, where we enter the door. So now I'm going to very roughly do this for the enemy. And this should be, I believe this should work basically in such a way where even for uh, like multiple enemies, this should work. Uh, Bundy says, oh, I've got to go until next time. All right, thank you very much for stopping by. Well, appreciate it. Really. All right, so what we're going to do, we're going to go, go ahead and grab uh, this fella. Actually, let me move myself. Whoops. Move myself over here. Eh. Yeah, that's fine. Eh. Yeah, I guess I'm fine. I guess I'm fine where I am, I, I suppose. Um, oh. Eh. That's fine. Okay. Eh, that's fine. All right, so <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and basically just grab this frame. We're going to copy it over here. We're gonna make a new tag. This is gonna be uh, enter. And we're just gonna kind of crib this a little bit. hands are in his pockets, I forgot. I'm gonna try... Oops. Kept the form roughly correct. That should basically do it. So, no, 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 no. enter. All right. So, we're just gonna pause in this frame for maybe like about maybe 500 milliseconds, and then we'll go ahead and start animating him fading in. That's the color that we use. This one. Did I have? I have both. Yeah, enter and exit. Okay. Uh, 
drag. This is going to be enter. Okay. Or rather, this is going to be hello. Door open. What did I name it? Door open. Okay. I forgot. Actually, this is going to be here. Because we don't have the animation of him turning around. I don't want to have to do that right now. Um, we're just going to grip this a little bit. New tag. This is the door open. This is where he starts to fade out, right? Right there. Yeah. Okay. So this should give us roughly what we need to kind of get going. Um, but we're going to win... We do this when we enter the state. We're just going to say like, okay, uh, enemy dot sprite dot play. We're going to play the enter animation, and then we say basically if enemy dot sprite dot hit tag, and we're going to look for door open. Uh, Romet Tagobert says. I'm not often able to show up for the stream live. I do enjoy watching these on demand a day or two later. I haven't used a sprite, but that tagging stuff looks super useful. Yeah. Thanks for sh uh, showing up slash uh, re watching my streams even late. Really do appreciate it. And yeah, tagging is a cool little feature. Uh, it's mainly used for, you know, defining animations in, an, in a file, in a set of, you know, defining animations in a project. But um, because they're just basically frames and it exports as just a sequence of images like this. Uh, it's just easier to go ahead and uh, kind of have both tags and animations. And so when you import it into a game engine or a game framework, you can examine those tags to see like, oh yeah, you just hit a tag. Uh, it's useful, yeah. So when we do this, then we just basically get the door and then we're done. Uh, get the door, animate, uh, or teleport, and we're, we're more or less done. So we're just going to copy this basic idea. Door, we get the door by doing this. We don't really care if it, there's no possibility for it to fail. Uh, so we'll just play the animation like normal, and then we just basically say, if you hit the tag, then we, uh, enter. Enemy doesn't work because we are missing a set center, so we'll add that. And that is it. Wait, no, it's not. We have to go back and say, when you're done, you go back to normal. That's right. All right, that should basically be it. That didn't work. Let's see why. Oh, because we never actually, yeah. But uh, our state machine deactivate door uh, return. We're done with the state and then enter. Is it, is it enter or not door? All right. Let's see if this. Whoops. Let's see if this works. Yo, let's go. Let's go! Yo! Yo, there you go! There you go! Okay, this is this is actually pretty sick. He's gonna take the door! It's not perfect. It's it's it, there's definitely things that it needs to, you know, it's not perfect, but I mean like he's 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 on me, dude. He'll take the door when he needs to. He'll he'll try other ways to get to me. That's great. E Boatwright says, "Hey, Solar. Hello. Welcome to the stream." 
Um, I think this is fine, honestly. You don't really need... I mean, he could be more aggressive. Like, the pathfinding could be could be sharper. Um, and how to fix that, I'm, I'm kind of thinking about. I'm, I'm wondering if I could just, like, basically uh, trigger his pathfinding more frequently rather than having it, you know, basically when he does, like, complete the path. Um... But at the same time, I mean, you know, he doesn't have to be super aggressive. Not every enemy needs to be aggressive. Ebrot Wright uh, says, what are you making this game in? I'm making it in... Okay, he's gonna go that way. I'm making it in uh, Go SDL2. I'm making it by hand, with code, uh, with Golang and SDL2. And I'm learning a lot as I do it. Things that I kind of thought like, oh, well, that's, you know maybe uh, you know this is a, a relatively easy way to do this or this is kind of to be expected uh i'm finding out like oh well this is another way to do this like it's fun it's fun and it's interesting and there's always a better way to do things and as i work i'm getting better at making games this way um but yeah this is great so far uh we're gonna commit this we're gonna commit this right here all of this, uh, we're just gonna say like, you know, player and enemy can now both take doors. I find through. Okay. Um, what we're gonna do next, I would like, still I have like maybe 15 minutes. Um, it's been an hour and a half, yeah. So uh, roughly an hour and a half, a little bit over. So 15 minutes will take it roughly two hours. Let's see if we can get BGM in the game. Shouldn't be that hard. Um, what we're gonna do, we're gonna grab uh, the songs that I made for this game. Uh, I have a couple of them. Let's see, where's the other one? Whoops, uh, I'll grab these two and I'll put them into the games directory. Let me show what, I, what I'm doing yet. Uh, SFX is gonna go in here, okay. You know what, let's make this BGM, there we go. SFX is gonna be for sound effects, BGM is gonna be for background music. Um, and so, I don't want actually, I don't want um, case sensitive files, just to make things simpler, and we're going to put these into our LDTK game, so we can basically see, like, oh yeah, you know, on these levels you have this song, on those levels you have that song. So we're going to go to uh, Enum. I already defined an Enum for the background music. We're going to say as Technology for one. We're going to say Door Jam for the other. Oh, it automatically capitalizes it. That's no good, but uh, sure. Um, we're just going to give them some colors, I guess. It doesn't really matter. Switch these around. There we go. Uh, cool. Now, the BGM is null for, for this song, or for this level. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to make, or load, uh, uh, a BGM file. One of these WAV files. And then pop them in. So... Let's close all this stuff because we don't need. Uh, let me. S I just have to make a note that I want to do that at some point. I want to revamp Go A Sprite. Um, Rashad Z says, "What source control software do you recommend?" I recommend Git. Yeah, Git, GitHub. Uh, I would recommend those. SVN, uh, Tortoise SVN is what I used to use, and SVN is what I used to use maybe 15, well, not 15 years ago, maybe 10 years ago, eight years ago, something like that. It was pretty good. Uh, I feel like SVN might be simpler for new developers, but Git is kind of what everybody uses and it allows you to do quite a bit. Um, I would recommend Git, yeah. And usually there's a lot of like uh, integrations like uh, a big Reggie is mentioning GitHub with VS Code. Uh, or GitHub Desktop Client. I'm sure Unity, Unity, and Unreal both have their own like uh, assets or like Git tie-in tools that can be used right from the editor. I'm sure that they must have that. I think Perforce is one for Unity. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of 
options out there and really anything would work even just manually taking backups as long as you do it regularly enough and you know it's ideally to an external drive or something like that that's probably the most safe option just because like what happens if github goes down you know who's to say you know whether git github owns your code i know that it's in the in the license agreement stuff that says you know you keep your intellectual property but at the same time you don't know what they're saying in their license agreement most people just use services like you know uh, github or imager or you know any site like that where you upload your content twitter you know i'm sure it's in there that says like oh yeah we can use your content for like uh marketing purposes or things like that so you know in terms of safety physical safety it would be nice to upload it to a cloud service like github in terms of uh uh like intellectual property safety the safest option safest option is going to be like a personal hard drive or something like that personal server you know somewhere something like that anyway it doesn't really matter i'm i'm going into just i'm getting lost in the sauce in truth uh anything you use is probably going to be more than good enough um okay so i'm going to look up sdl2's uh, uh hold up mixer is that what they have uh can i get a documentation uh, SDL2 Mixer is a sound mixing library used as almost as portable. Use mul multiple sample samples along with music without having to code a mixing algorithm themselves. Okay, so it's mainly for mixing. So let's see, SDL2 sound. Uh, play a sound with SDL2. No, wait. Let me actually initialize it. Open audio. But it's using the mixer. Okay, so you open the audio with the mixer. Open the mixer, rather. Uh, load it. Okay, so just mix. All right, we're cool. We're Gucci. So we're going to go ahead and go to resources. Not sure if I'll be able to do this in time, but we'll give it a shot. Uh, we will check to see what the resource path ending is. File path. Dot extension. Resource path. Switch. Mixer. Mix. Dot. Uh, load. So you got MUS. Load MUS loads a music file to use. This can load Wave, Mod, MIDI, AUG, MP3, FLAC, and any file that you use a command to play with. If you're using an external command to play the music, you must call mix.setMusic command before this. Otherwise, the internal players will be used. Alternatively, if you don't have an external, okay, it turns a pointer to a mix music. You got raw, you got wave. Wave loads the file for use for sample. Uh, so I'm not, wait, wait, wait. At low time. Okay. All right. So a music and a chunk. All right. So music, I'm guessing, is for streaming. Wave is for basically playing it back. It loads into memory. All right. So we're going to assume that we're just going to load. We'll have to make some sort of distinction. Maybe OGS will be for music. Wave will be for sound. Or maybe... Uh... Yeah, we can't change that dynamically okay maybe we'll do maybe we'll load them both and then you can just choose we'll we'll just we'll do with music for now we'll we'll just go with music so we're gonna resource we're gonna pass in the resource path it gives us back a music file and an error so in us equals this if error is like nil then panic on the error because that shouldn't happen and then resource.data equals in us that's really it rather simple uh, we're going to go over to open for resource. As I mentioned, okay. Home resource, resource, as music, SD, nice music, return resource data dot music. Okay. Does it return? It is. Okay. So now what we're going to do 
So case dot wave is load music. Um, Rashad Z says like a hard drive or even an old school way, like with backing it up on a DVD or CD. Uh, I mean, well, yeah, hard drive would be good. You know, in terms of pure safety, like, you know, it's relatively safe uh, physically. You know, you can always get it back usually as long as you don't lose the hard drive or the hard drive breaks down. But I mean, like, you know, that's safe. And then it's offline. Um, whereas putting it online, you never know. You know, you got hacking to consider. You got stuff like that. Um, it's not really a big deal, but I mean, it's just, it's something that you might want to consider, especially if you're working on something for a long time. And if it's uh, prolific, like if it's profitable, you know, it, like I don't know if like Windows is stored on GitHub, like the source code to Windows or the source code to you know, uh, the Nintendo Switch's operating system, if that's stored on a GitHub or any kind of a public repository like that. I feel like for those like big projects, they're probably stored somewhere internally on servers in a multiple in multiple locations, you know, that kind of stuff. But, you know, for your small indie game or your own little projects, you can use GitHub, that's fine. But I'm just saying that like, in terms of security, in terms of owning your your you know content in terms of making sure that it doesn't get hacked or it's not exposed to other people you know you gotta think about that kind of stuff um yeah i mean like you can there's private repos as well so like you don't have to have open source re repos um uh, you know public repos but at the same time you know you want to consider your options when it comes to security. Uh, it's not really a big deal if you're just working for yourself, working on your own projects, but as you make bigger stuff, you might want to consider it. All right, so the the music probably isn't going to switch in game, I don't think, so we're not going to worry too much about that. Uh, we're just going to do it like this, SDL or mix.music. We're going to say music is going to be uh game dot resources or resource we're gonna load in assets bgm as technology dot wave dot as music let's see if this crashes i imagine it will it did unrecognized audio format because we didn't call mix open Open audio. Wait. Open audio device. Open audio. Okay. So open audio uh, frequency. We're just going to go for 44, 1,000, 100. Uh, format. Let's see. Does it have a format? Default format. What? Oh. Oh, so you, okay, so just defaults. All right, understood. Default channel, uh, default frequency, default format. That's nice. Default channels, default chunk size. Cool. Okay, so that opens the audio. Let's see if it doesn't crash this time. It does not crash this time. All right, let's go over. I wait. We don't want that anymore. Um, let's go over and actually try getting this to work. Should be as simple as just like going uh, mix dot play. Or no, no, level dot music dot play. Plays in loop times. I'm gonna guess either zero or negative one is gonna loop. Let's see if that's the case. Uh, let's see. Zero plays the music zero times. Oh, number of times to loop through the music. Zero plays the music zero times. Negative one plays it forever. I'm not sure why they wouldn't make zero, make it loop zero times, but play once. But I guess that makes more sense to, for one to play it once, two to play it twice. All right, so we'll just uh, say negative one for now. Let's see if it plays. Yo, let's go. Cool, okay. That was rather simple.
Okay, cool. Uh... Okay, this this mess does bang though. Does anyone remember uh, Game Maker and, and like playing MP3 songs in old Game Maker games? And when they loop, it would be like a, a half second pause. That was such a that was such a rough time. <laughs> like the independent game like community, like back in like 2003 uh, to 2010, I don't even know. But like the old like Game Maker music looping problem, where it was just like, oh yeah, it's just gonna like pause for like a second before the, it loops and like freeze the entire game that was such a bananas like oh, that's such that's so insane it's so nostalgic but it's such an insane thing coming from that and thinking about that now where i'm sure that's not still a problem but like you know when you're making a game with like sdl or something it's just like that's it's just like what like what how like how is how does that even happen i don't know it's just it's funny um it's it's just it's very nostalgic Okay, so this is working really well. We want to actually, uh, instead of setting the music here, we want to load it um, in here. So when we load a level, we want to load the BGM. We'll just load it at the, at the end, I guess. So we want to do something like this. And then we want to append onto that, that wave. We want to append onto that the level, the LDTK level uh, property by identifier. And then we want BGM, which is, is it, I guess it is capitalized. Okay. Let's see, BGM name is this, uh, let's see. Actually, I guess I can just do like if BGM name dot is null, it's not null rather. Then we know the music has to be something, so we say music is this as string. Uh, but we also want to lowercase all of that, so can we strings dot lower lower? Uh, and that is basically it, right? Okay, cool. Um, let's see if it works. All right, so we run the game. Nil, we're good. Um, actually, are we still trying to play it? We are. Okay, we say basically if level.music is not even nil, then we go ahead and try to play it. We're good. Okay. So we run it. There's no music, and so nothing happens. We go over to here, and we say, like, oh, BGM uh, for the level. We want it to be as technology. Save. Go back and run. Cool. And now it should be that if we go over to back and we say oh yeah we don't want as technology we want door jam for the bgm we go back over here we run
fantastic absolutely fantastic now the thing uh that i'm hearing if it, it feels i don't know if it's correct but it feels like uh the audio's kind of janky like it's a little a little we, can, we don't need to print that anymore uh it feels a little fuzzy it feels a little fuzzy um let me let me double check that it might just be my ears nah it's it's definitely crisp Yeah, that's way crisper. That's way crisper than when you play it through the game. Yeah, it's fuzzy. So, uh, I believe that's because of the format. The format's... What? <laughs> what? Excuse me? The default frequency is 22.0. No way. That's insane. The default frequency is 22.050, dude. How is that a good default frequency? A, de a default sample rate. What the heck, bro? Why? How? <laughs> I was expecting, like, my audio was 44.8 and it's 44.1 or 48 kilohertz. And the audio, the audio is 48 kilohertz and the default is 40. 4.1. I was like, okay, maybe that's what it is. Why is it so incredibly low? That's weird. Give me, give me, yeah, 44.1. It crashed. Interesting. Unrecognized audio format. Is that because I need to, what's it? You went 16? Or is that the form? Oh, that's the format. My bad. 44, 100. That's such a weird number. There we go. All right, perfect. This actually could be 40, 48. I feel like it, it might be a little, a little low still. Yeah, I think it might actually be a little bit low in comparison. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I swear I'm here. Like, I'm... Uh... Yeah, I, I, I think that's correct. I think that's better. Uh, I mean, of course it's better because it's higher quality but i feel like i can hear the difference um but i'm not sure if it's that quality in the file itself i'm gonna guess it is is it though uh yeah it is okay so then i can i can i am correct cool well that's fantastic this the audio is easy dude audio is is pretty simple i'm, I'm surprised that's the cool thing about sdl is like the harder things are kind of hard whereas the simpler things are simple like you know aud loading the audio loading textures loading images is like that's easy but like wrapping on uh, wrapping images that's harder uh so in answer to romet tagobert what are you doing who who asked what are you doing to make that uh background wrap is it just animated like that on the sprite level i sh no yeah no uh the way that it is basically it's a little it's a little texture it's a little texture of a checkerboard like this and uh so you know it tiles very well as you can see so what it does is just basically it's rendering this little this little square uh to a texture and then it's render it, it's uh tiling that across the entire texture so it's uh, uh a little bit bigger than the screen and then it basically just slides over and over again to tile uh to give the effect that it's scrolling really it's it let me see. I'm trying to see if... Oh, this is not... I'm looking for this. Uh, it's not... 
as like clean as it could be. Where is it? Tile. Yeah, tile image. So you can see it, it basically is tiling a the background little square uh, across a 1024 by 1024 image. And then basically it really doesn't have to be that big. It could be instead just like 512 by 512. Um, and so basically it's just sliding and then resetting after it passes like 32 pixels on the X axis. Uh, it resets the, the X slide and then same thing for the Y. So really it could just be like the size of the screen plus 32 or something like that. Uh, level dot game dot game width. We'll go with 15, 512 by 512 because that's a power of two. And also, it's rather cool. Uh, where is it? Uh, what is it? It's not door jams called load under light. Check out that CPU usage, that memory usage. That's insane, dude. Zero <laughs> percent. Like it's t it's it's just like it's it's chilling, dude. It's chilling. Like that's 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 great. I don't think it's literally actually zero percent. Of course, that's insane. That breaks the laws of thermodynamics. But rather, uh, you know, it's it's pretty low. It's really really rather uh, rather low, which is great. Um, Romet says, "What language did you use before for the difference to be so striking or framework?" I was using Ebiton. Ebiton, uh, it does like have like some shaders and stuff built in. I mean, it, well, it has shaders, but I think the even drawing something in Ebiton uses the shader uh in such a way where you can do like fancy uh color blending and you know it like you can rotate and like scale and skew um images or textures really well so it, i mean like you know it's not a it's not like it's just, it's just slower it does do things um as efficiently as possible and it does have more going for it than sel2 at a base level uh in terms of just like you know kind of conveniences but uh, if you can get around and and like work with SDL two, like you see why so many games and applications use SDL two because it's fast and it's optimized and it's just it's clean, dude. Like it's not, it's not, it doesn't do everything, but what it does do, it does very well. I think that's probably the best way to describe it. Like it's, it doesn't touch a whole lot of like realms. Like you have to make your own frame timing. You have to make your own uh like input uh like binding system and all that but like it does do the stuff it does really well to the point where it's like you can't be upset at you know how it handles music so far at least it seems like you can't be upset at how it handles music or how it handles you know texture loading and stuff like that so it's 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 an interesting and different way to make games compared to using something like game maker or uh you know uh unity or unreal or anything like that you know, love 2D, Godo. Um, but the flip side is that it's just really like, it's just, it's kind of powerful. Just add it, it does what it does really well. Like 0% CPU, 14 megabytes of RAM? 14 megabytes of RAM, my dude? Like, that's kind of insane. That's, that's, like, people are gonna, like, buy the game and before they get up to, like, go to the bathroom, it's done downloading. <laughs> they're like what <laughs> it's like yeah dude this thing is like seven megabytes big how let's see go if i wanted to build it if i wanted to build it it's finished building and it is 36 megabytes big that's that's not like extremely small but that does include the all the assets Oh, 
Oh, it crashed. Interesting. Interesting. Hold on. I was trying to run it. Let me see here. Why would it crash? Couldn't open assets door GFX door.png. I thought it included all the assets. Did I am I incorrect? Resources? Don't don't I? Yeah, assets. Embed go embed assets. Assets. GFX. Oh, does oh do you have to oh I think you do. Hold on. I think you have to embed. Yeah, okay. Let's see. Go embed a, 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 a directive. Okay, it must be. Okay, for example, go right find. Okay, the patterns are forward slash. Patterns may not contain normally. Okay, so. If a pattern names a directory, all files in the subtree rooted at that directory are embedded. Recursively, except for that files with names beginning with dot or underscore are excluded. This is interesting. Does this not embed? Does it not embed all of assets? Do I need to do assets slash? Let's see. Content on image slash. All files in the subtree, subtree rooted at that directory are embedded recursively. It can't find door.png assets. Assets gfx door.png is definitely there. Couldn't open. But why did it get to, how did it get all the way down to the point of making the door and then fail. Uh, I gotta get going. Let's see. Interesting. This is very interesting. Is there very, a way for you to list the embedded, pa embedded paths for debugging? I think there is, but I, I want to see where it's crashing first. So we, it goes to, it's loading the level, right? Main, main, main. Level 47, that's here. Uh, level 90. So it goes all the way through here. So it makes this stuff, but then it gets stuck on making a, the door, which is the first, that's probably the first entity. Okay, let's go ahead and try test this out real quick. Uh, let's, not that it will work, but let's print out assets. Can I print out assets in some sort of appreciable way? Right, assets open. Okay, so this definitely. Oh wow! So it's like literally just printing out like the contents of every file in the assets directory. Okay. So let's try GFX uh, door dot. All right. It definitely seems to exist, but if I build it and then run, what? Oh, whoops. So what's this?
I thought isn't it is it not embedding it? Am I am I running a different version of Go? No. Go 1.16. That should be able to do this. Let's see. Alright, let's put this just anywhere else. Eh? How could it not open assets GFI stored at PNG? Um That doesn't exist. That doesn't exist. This is interesting. Uh, I'll have to investigate this further at another time, unfortunately. Our amount of time. It's, it's able to... Hmm. Hmm. Okay, so there it is. So it's able to see the item, see the, the file. If I put it here and then run it, it still sees the file, but it says it couldn't open it. Why might it not be able to open it? Resources go 60. Resources go 60, 60, 60. Image.load, it's not able to load the image. Uh, image dot load must be manually take. It must be manually. Yeah. Okay, that's probably why. Okay, that's why. So basically, when we're even though we're we have the asset. Oh yeah, none of the resources are being are being loaded from the asset. I have to. That's what I I haven't done this. Okay, I just straight up haven't done this yet. My bad. Uh, what this need, what I need to do here is basically load uh, raw, load PNG RW, uh, SDL.RW ops. We need a new RW from file, I believe. Is there any other way to do that? RW from memory, that's what we need. RW from memory. Uh, and then we say open asset, and then we say resource path. Okay, so this is the asset. Um, so we'll say like asset data, maybe this. Well, I guess we put it here. Asset data is going to be this. So this is the asset data, which is a byte. We're going to read asset data. We're going to put that there. Let's see, image from mem. It's going to be this. This returns the ops and the error. So we'll say error is for this. If error is not to nil, panic error. Okay. And then we say image from mem. Okay, there we go. And then we we'll just do the same thing for uh, wave. This is going to be load mus rw. Uh, og and micmod specific currently. Dang. So it doesn't open. Assuming a specific format resource. Hmm. Well, this is going to be interesting. We can load waves raw. We can load music raw, maybe using a type quick load. Raw. Okay. Let's try this because, yeah, I really do have to get going. Um, we'll try. Tr <laughs> excuse me. We'll try this and see how it works. Um, yeah, there's not even any documentation <laughs> link here. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll try it and see how it goes. So we have, uh, this, we want basically the, um, raw RW is equal to this. We say if there's not the mill, we want to panic, uh, we, MUS RW, uh, this is going to give us the music and the error. Okay. That's fine. Free source. I'm going to just pass zero for now. See how that goes. Uh, oh. Whoops. 
Let's try that. Yeah, I crashed. Invalid memory address that is here. Defer file close. There's a file, let's see. Oh, where, do I even use open asset? I don't know if I do. Yeah, why don't I, why don't I fix this correctly? Assets. That's right. Assets. We don't do this. We just pass the file path directly. There we go. We don't need to print out the file path. We can just try it. All right. I think we're we're grooving. Let's see. Uh, now we can try building it. Oh, Ray, Wave RW is probably fine considering you're using Wave as a condition anyway. That's true. I guess I could have. I didn't think about it. <laughs> You're right. <clears throat> You're right. All right, let's try this one more time. We're just going to push this out to this directory. And we got a 71. Oh, my gosh. 71 megabytes. What's taking up all the room? Both of these are rather small. Well, I guess those will be compressed a little bit once we actually get. Yeah, that's an additional like 30 megabytes. That's probably where it is because it was about 30 megabytes before. Let's check. How big is this? folder assets folder it is 32 megabytes seems like it's a little big but it might well it's work it's working that's good all right Right, that's, that's solid that's solid it's a little big but uh we can definitely see about sizing it down in the future uh 70 megabytes is, yeah it's, uh, it's a little a little chunky um but i think we could do better uh romet tigelbert says how aren't go binaries themselves pretty chunky how much was it before the embed it was like well the embed wasn't working correctly before although it wasn't i i didn't really do anything though didn't i like the assets, yeah, it's embedding the same amount of files, so I'm not sure why it's bigger now. I'm not sure why, yeah, I'm not sure why it's bigger now. I have to go, unfortunately, but yeah, this is a, something to consider. I feel like it can we can get it down smaller. I feel like it, we can get it down to maybe 30, maybe 20 megabytes, 40 megabytes. We'll have to see. But it's been fun. I thank you very much for stopping by my stream. It's been a lot of fun. And we got a lot done today. Uh, so, yeah, thank you very much for watching. I've been Solar Loon. Shenanigans indeed. Romet Togglebert. I really do appreciate everyone coming through the, the stream. And I'll see if I can uh, reduce some of the size a little bit uh, moving forward. But, yeah, it's been fun. And I'll catch you guys on the flip side next time. See ya.